Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we'll be creating this particle fire effect using Mantaflow and the particle system. To achieve this we'll be using the new updated fluid flow force field in Blender 2.9. So make sure you have the latest version installed and we'll be ready to go. The first thing that we will do is delete the default cube and create the simulation. I'll press shift A and add in a plane and for this plane I'm going to press S and Y, scale it along the Y axis then S and X and scale it out this way. From there, we can go over to Object, down to Quick Effects, and then Quick Smoke. This will automatically add a domain for us, and then we can go into Front View by pressing 1 and scaling up the domain how we like. Something around here will work perfectly fine. And then over in the Domain Settings, I'm going to set the resolution to 128. Over in the Gas Settings, I'm going to set the vorticity of the smoke up to 1. This will give it a couple more swirls. Then underneath the fire panel, setting the vorticity of the flames to 0.6. This will give them a little bit more randomness. Finally, in the cast settings, I'm going to set the end frame to 150. And then underneath the type, I'm going to switch this over to modular. If you are going to stop the bake halfway through, make sure is resumable is turned on so you can actually resume the bake. Then we'll go over to the inflow settings. Over in the inflow, I'm going to set the flow type over to fire. And then for the fuel, this is the height of the flames and how chaotic they are. I'm going to set that up to two. Underneath the flow source, I'm going to set the surface emission value to one. The last thing that we'll do in the inflow is to add in a texture. If we turn on the texture and open up this panel, we can add in a texture to where we want the flames to actually be on our plane. From here, we can go over to the texture panel and create a new one. The type, I'm going to switch it over to clouds. The size value, I'm going to bring to 0.15 and this will just lower the texture. Then over in the colors, I'm going to set the contrast up to 4. This will give more definition between the white and the black values. From there, we can go back over to the physics tab and then select the texture that we just created. Where the white values are, that is where the fire will be and where the black values are, there will be no fire. Currently though, it's in the exact same position on the plane, so we're going to animate the offset value so the texture actually moves around. This will give the fire a lot more realistic results. To do this, we're going to animate the offset value. So over on frame one, I'm going to add in a keyframe. Then we'll jump to the end, frame 150. Set the offset up to 0.75, and then add in another keyframe. Another thing that we need to do is actually set the interpolation of these two keyframes to linear because right now it's using a curve to smooth out the animation. So basically what happens is it starts out slow and then speeds up in the middle and then slows down at the end. So in order to fix this, we're going to select both of these keyframes by just dragging over them, then hitting T. And then if we select linear, now it's going to be a straight line, which is a constant rate. Now that we've done that, let's select our domain and make sure you save your project before you bake it. Once you've done that, you can click on Bake Data. The bake has finished, now let's just scroll through here to view our animation, and that looks pretty good. Now we are ready to set up the particle system. What we're going to do is actually select the plane that is our inflow object, and then press Shift D to duplicate. Over in the Physics tab, make sure you delete the fluid. And then also over in the Object panel, we're going to go underneath the Viewport display and set the display as wire over to solid. Now we can actually see it in our viewport. Then over in the particle system, we're going to create a new one and then leave the type at emitter. Now let's add in the fluid flow force field. I'm gonna press shift A and go underneath force field and then add in the fluid flow. We'll drag it up so it's right in the middle of our domain and then go over to the physics tab. Here we have a strength value and the higher you set this to, the more the particles will follow and the faster they will be. For this animation, I'm gonna set it to three. And then of course, for the domain object, select the smoke domain. This is very important. If you don't do this, the simulation will not work. So select smoke domain and you'll be good to go. Let's go ahead and select our plane once again, which is this one right here, the one that has the particle system. And let's actually name this so we know what we're doing. I'm going to call it particle emitter. The number of particles you can set here. And for this animation, I'm going to go up to 250,000. I think that will look pretty good. And then the end frame, I'm going to set to 150. And the lifetime, we will leave at 50. Underneath the field weights, we need to make sure gravity is turned off so the fluid flow actually catches the particles as they rise. 
So now if we restart and then play this, you can see it's starting to work and the particles are moving with the fire. It's a little bit hard to see because the particles are quite large. So let's press Shift A and add in a particle object. In this case, it's going to be an icosphere. Underneath the icosphere settings, set the subdivisions down to one so we have less geometry to work with. I'll move it over to the left, scale it down just slightly, and then select the particle emitter once again. If we go underneath the render tab, we can select render as halo to render as object. And then for the instant object, of course, we're gonna use the icosphere. If we play our simulation now, we can see they are still quite large. So let's select the icosphere once again and scale them down. You can also turn up the scale randomness in the particle system, and this will give it a cool effect as well. All right, I like how that looks. Now let's go ahead and bake this in. Make sure you set the end frame in the timeline to 150 as well, and then we can click on bake. All right, the bake has finished. Now we don't need any of the smoke stuff anymore, so I'm going to select the smoke domain and then the original flow object, and then press M and move them to a new collection, collection two, and then I'm just gonna turn off that collection so we just see this plane. Now, if we hit the spacebar, we can see what our particle system looks like. And as you can see, it does look pretty cool. All of the particles are flowing in the direction of the fire, and I like it. Another thing that we're gonna do with this particle system is actually make the particles disappear at a certain point. I want them to become smaller as they rise up. We can do this very easily with a texture. If we scroll down all the way to the bottom of the particle system and open up the texture panel, we can create a new texture right here. Now, if we jump over to the texture panel, we can see it's currently on clouds. We don't want this. We want it to use the blend option. So switch it over to blend. Underneath the influence, we can decide what we want this texture to influence. And you have a lot of options here. The density, the size and all that, the one that we're gonna be using is the size. So if we turn this on, You'll notice it goes left to right. That's not what we want either. We want it to go up and down. So over in the coordinates value, switch this over to strand particle. Now at the moment it's inverted. So what we need to do is open up the color ramp. I'll turn the color ramp on and then flip this. So select this little arrow and then click on flip color ramp. So now what you can see is as the particle rises, it becomes smaller at the top. If you want a gradual transition, you can leave it here. Or if you want a quicker transition, you can drag the white value closer to the black value. So now what's happening is it will go to a certain point and then quickly disappear. If you don't like how fast they're disappearing, you can set the offset along the X direction. If I drag this up, you can see it gets higher. I might drag it to a value of negative 0.2, and I think that will look pretty good. And now for the particle material, let's select the icosphere in our scene and then jump over to the Material tab. We'll create a new one, and then open up the Shader Editor by splitting this view, and switching this over to the Shader Editor. I'm gonna press N to close off that panel. What we're gonna do is delete the principled shader, and then press Shift A, we will add in a shader, and then Emission Shader. If we then take the Emissive and plug that into the Surface value, what we're gonna do now is create a gradient. So at the bottom of the plane, it's going to have a white color, and then in the middle, it's gonna be an orange, and then at the top, it's going to have a red value. To do this, we need to press Shift A and add in a converter and then a color ramp, and we'll place that here. And then we'll press Shift A, add in a input, and then a object info node. You might think to actually use the particle info node, but since we're gonna be rendering this in EV, the particle info node will not work we need to use an object info. And finally, we need a way to control where this is located. So underneath vector, we're going to add in a mapping node. Take the location and plug that into the vector and then the vector into the factor of the color ramp. And then of course the color ramp goes into the emission shader. I'll set the strength to three. Now, if we press Z and go into rendered view, we should be able to see what this looks like. As you can see, it's currently at an angle. So underneath the rotation, we're gonna set the Y to 45. Now it's going up and down. So if I drag the black value closer, you can see the black comes in. I'm gonna set the black value all the way up to white. Then I'll click on the plus sign to add in a new handle. And this one is going to have a nice orange color somewhere around here. And then for this white value, this is going to be a red color. 
And then you can play around with the location. So I might drag the orange closer over here. And I might also set this over to E so it's a little bit of a better transition. I think that looks pretty good. I might drag the red closer like this. Over in the world settings, I'm gonna set the color down to black so we can actually see this. Yep, and as you can see, that looks much better. One more thing that we need to do with the particle system is hide the emitter object. So select it and go over to the particle system. Underneath the render tab, I'm gonna turn off show emitter so the plane will not show up in the final render. And now I think we are ready to render out our animation. I'm gonna close off this tab, we're not gonna need it anymore. And I'll go into front view by pressing one, and then I'll hit Control Alt Zero to snap the camera to place. You can select the camera, and then press G, middle mouse button, and drag it backwards. Somewhere around here will look pretty good. I'm also gonna go over to the EV settings and then turn on Bloom, and this will give it a really cool effect as you can see here. Once we've done that, we can go over to the output tab and set an output of where we want our file to go to. Make sure you set up all of the settings that you want for your output, and I am going to be rendering this as a movie file because we are using Eevee and it should go pretty fast. Once you've set up all this, save your project once again, and then you can go over to render and then render animation. The render has finished. Now to view your results, you can exit out of this window, go over to render, and then click on view animation. Once you do this, a new window will pop up and you'll be able to see your animation in real time. Another cool feature in Blender 2.9 is the ability to render motion blur with Eevee. And using a lot of motion blur with this scene can actually give some interesting results. If you turn on motion blur and then set the shutter amount to let's say like 15 or so, you also want to make sure the step amount is a lot higher, like 32 will probably be pretty good. And now if you render this, your animation will look something like this and it can give a really cool effect. So there you go, that is how you create a cool fire simulation using particles, using the new Fluid Flow Force Field. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed, make sure you give it a like and subscribe for more tutorials in the future. If you created your own animation, I would love to see it, so make sure to send it to me over on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.